Now, another important feature of Ansible is its ability to write infrastructure as a code. And that's what sets it apart from the procedural or the scripting approach that you might be familiar with, right? Now, most of you might be familiar with uh, some sort of a scripting, could be Bash, could be Perl, could be Python, could be even PowerShell on Windows, right? Now, the fundamental difference between a scripting approach versus Ansible is this, the declarative interface, right? Now, to understand this, I generally take this analogy where, let's say you want to build a house. Now, when you want to build a house, you generally hire a contractor who gets some construction workers and they are the ones who spend time building your house. They are the ones who know how to do it brick by brick, right? They're the ones who know the procedural part. On the other hand, you also hire an architect. Now, if you look at it closely, the job of an architect is to come up with a design or a blueprint for your building. Now, if you look at how they approach this is the architect starts with the end state or the desired state of your building and then they break it down into this component and then you know write a specification for each of that component. This is where your parking is, this is where your porch is, this is where your bedroom is, this is where your hall is, this is where your kitchen is and they'll write a specification, stitch it together and they create the final output that is the design of your building, right? And that's what they hand over to the contractor and contractor looks at that, that, consider, that is considered as the desired state and that defines what should be there. The architect doesn't care about how it is done, they just write what should be there as part of that specification or the plan, right? And that's exactly what we start doing when we start using tools such as Ansible and uh, one of the examples of that is, let's say, we want to create a user. Now, when you use a procedural program such as Perl, Python, Shell, uh, Bash, whatever, uh, you generally f focus on how to create a user and then you start thinking about what command to use, uh, you know, how do I go about writing that procedure and uh, write some if else conditionals and so on and so forth. Uh, when it comes to the infrastructure as a code or a declarative approach, instead of focusing on how we're going to start thinking about what we want. In, you know, for example, let's say I want a user whose name is XYZ, whose uh, UID is, uh, let's say, 5001, uh, whose shell is uh, bash, whose password is something, right? And that's my definition of this user that I want, right? Now it's I'm going to give it to Ansible and Ansible is going to look at this and convert it into the actual procedure uh, which can be, let's say, using a command such as user add or add user or Windows may have a certain uh, other command and so on, right? And that's what Ansible does and that's what it brings into the table. It allows you to write a spec and then it converts it into the actual procedure and then it decides what action to take, whether to take an action and it does the state management on its own by default, right? And that's where item potence comes in. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how does it actually go about managing the state. If you like this content, do like, share and subscribe. You may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses. You can also visit us at schoolofdevops.com.